MongoDB Stitch is a serverless platform you can use as an alternative to Google's Firebase or Amazon's serverless. I started using it in one of my Android projects a few months ago and I am quite happy with its performance and reliability. One of the best things about it is that it offers very simple access to a cloud-hosted, fully configured MongoDB Atlas cluster. This means if you know how to use MongoDB, the NoSQL database, then you are going to have a lot of fun working with MongoDB Stitch. You must understand that MongoDB Stitch and MongoDB Atlas are very closely connected to each other. So the first thing we are going to be doing in this video is uh, creating a MongoDB Atlas account and provisioning a free MongoDB Atlas cluster. Creating an account takes less than a minute. First press the start free button and fill in your details here. What I love about MongoDB Atlas's free tier is that it offers highly available replica sets. So this means you can always be sure that your database is up and running. And now, as soon as your account is ready, you will be taken to this screen where you can create your free cluster. I'll be using Amazon as the cloud provider and North America as the region. I choose these values only because they support free tier clusters. M0 is the tier that's free, so I'm not going to be changing anything here. But I will change the cluster name to something more meaningful. Let's say test cluster. And that's it. Press the create cluster button and your free MongoDB Atlas cluster will be provisioned. They say here that the provisioning process will take 7 to 10 minutes, but I've seen that it usually takes less than 3 minutes. You'll see that three new servers are being provisioned and that's because you are going to have a replica set with three nodes. That's awesome. Once the cluster is ready, you will be able to press this link application button to link it to a MongoDB Stitch application. We don't have any Stitch applications currently, so let's create a new one. I'm gonna call my application test application and nothing else to change here. So press create. This doesn't take too long. Alright, here we are at the Stitch dashboard. With MongoDB Stitch, you can allow users to log into your application using their Google or Facebook accounts. But for now, I'm going to go with anonymous authentication. Mainly because it's the easiest option. If you want to, you can create a new database and collection in your MongoDB Atlas cluster now. This is totally optional because you can always create the database and cluster programmatically in very few lines of code. If you press the add collection button twice, the example code snippets will be updated to work with your new database and collection. Next, let's add a service. With services, your Stitch application will be able to interact with third-party websites. Okay, press this button and you can see here that Stitch supports a few different types of services. It supports Twilio, AWS and GitHub, right out of the box. But if you want to interact with other websites, you must use the HTTP service. Let's say we want to use the HTTP service to connect to Reddit. So I'm going to select HTTP and call the service HTTP for Reddit. You can use this service from the client side but usually it's a good idea to use it only from the Stitch platform itself. So let us now create a Stitch function. Here I'm going to call this function fetch from reddit and press the save button. Inside the function you can write your code in javascript. I'm going to clear all this and I'll also remove the arguments that are being passed to this function. And in the console remove this hello world argument being passed because uh, we just changed the function signature. Okay, now one thing you need to remember is that MongoDB Stitch functions have access to an object called context. You'll need the context to perform a lot of operations. 
For example, to get a reference to the HTTP service you just created, you would say context.services.get HTTP for Reddit. Similarly, to get a reference to the database on your MongoDB Atlas cluster, you would say context.services.get MongoDB Atlas. To give you a realistic example, I'm now going to show you how to find the top post on Reddit's front page. So if you visit Reddit, this would be the front page and this would be the top post. Once we find the top post, we are going to be inserting various details about the post such as its title, author and ID into our MongoDB Atlas database. If you're wondering how to get those details, just append .json to this URL and add a query parameter saying limit equals 1. So now you will see this JSON document containing everything you need about the current top post. Alright, let's copy this URL and pass it to the get method of the HTTP service. As you might expect, this function runs asynchronously, so add a then call to it. Here you must first get the body of the JSON document in the form of plain text. And then to parse the JSON you will have to use the ejson.parse method. ejson stands for extended JSON and is a superset of JSON. To extract the post details from this JSON we will have to just get the first element in the data.children array. From here to get the title you can say post.data.title and to get the author post.data.author Let's also get the ID of the post. Alright, now what do we do with this data? Let's just print it. You can use console.log to write to the console. If you run this function now, you'll be able to see the top post after a few seconds. So that's working. Next, let's put these post details into our MongoDB Atlas cluster. Doing so is extremely easy. All you need to do is get a reference to the database. Then to the collection. And finally call the insert1 method. Here you'll have to create a new JSON document containing the title, the author and the ID. We need to handle this result too. So in case of a success, let's say one document was inserted. If the top post hasn't changed when we call this function again, it will lead to an error because we can't insert duplicate IDs into our database. So let's return some error message here. And this function as a whole needs to return something. So add the return keyword here too. Our function is ready. Let's call it one more time to make sure it's working correctly. Perfect. And now, finally, let's try to take a look at the contents of our database from a client application. To keep things simple, let's create a simple JavaScript based client application. So create a new HTML document and add the usual boilerplate code to it, which will include a head tag and a body tag. Alright, now go to the getting started section, scroll down a little and just copy the script tag. Paste it here. 
Then create a new script tag in the body. Copy these three lines of code next and paste them here. This creates a client object you can use to interact with your Stitch application. As you can probably tell, this line gives you access to your MongoDB Atlas database. And this line is responsible for the anonymous authentication. It's important you understand that unless the end user has been authenticated, he or she will not be able to use your Stitch application. Even in the case of anonymous authentication, the user is assigned a unique authentication ID which can be used to identify the user, at least until he or she decides to clear their browser history. Alright, now let's call the collection method of the DB to select our collection. And then call its find method to get all the documents that are present in it. Here we can write a simple for loop to loop through the documents. Inside the loop, I'm going to display each post using a paragraph element. I can use the create element method to create the paragraph. The inner text of this paragraph is going to be the title of the current post. And I'm also going to show the index of the post incremented by 1. Finally, we can add the element to the body of the document. And that's it. On opening this page in the browser, you will get something like this. You now have a web application that's fully connected to your Stitch application. It's able to fetch data from the MongoDB Atlas cluster that's connected to the Stitch application. I hope you found this introduction to the MongoDB Stitch platform useful. There are definitely many more things you can do with it, but I think I've covered most of the frequently used features. If you have any questions or feedback, please do leave a comment. Thank you.